Hey guys, Jeff Ryan here. Got a fun project coming up today. Um, can you find a box that's more disgusting than that? You know what? Oh my god, I was I was thinking I just unpackaged it. I was thinking I'm going like, if I'm gonna ever either use the box or you know sell it with the box or just the box, I'm gonna have to restore the box. I know a lot of guys collect the box, but that's hardly worth collecting. I, I, I was kidding, but I'm half serious now. I might have to restore the darn box, you know, just for fun. So what do we have? Blue Firebird. Blue Firebird. Looks like it's in, um, it hasn't been played with condition for 50 years. That's what it looks like. That doesn't look like it's got any brushes, does it? I don't know. I'll have to check further. Um, can't wait to get into it. It just looks like it could probably use a good cleaning. Uh, the chassis, if it's missing any parts, we'll get into that. And um, let's have some fun with the guys. And while I'm thinking about nothing, uh, a package came in from um, rather boring on eBay model motoring. And look at the boom. I just set it in place. It just, it's like absolutely perfect. And one thing, one thing, guys, a uh, number of you guys told me, there's no darn mud flaps on there, is there? I didn't even think about it. I didn't even consider that. I, I, I wasn't even looking at that. You know, and then when uh, one of my viewers said, hey, listen, there's no mud flaps, I went out and I looked at them and I'm going, they're gone. You know, and what do you think? Did somebody, I don't know, break them, sand? I don't know. I don't know, but they're not there. They're not there. So I just started cracking up. I just started absolutely cracking up. Uh, a couple more things came in. Remember I was telling you about, I think that the Mako Shark windshield might fit in here. It snapped in perfect, guys. Look at that. Absolutely snapped in perfect. I am I'm thrilled with that. Absolutely thrilled with that. The uh, Lola, the Lola, it fits in there real good. There's just a little bit, a little bit of a gap in, uh, right where the hood is and the, the windshield meets. And I know it's because that inside a uh, circle there is preventing it from, um, you know, setting down where it should be. Going to have to figure out a solution or or I just might sell them as kits and uh, let somebody else figure out a solution. But I'm pleased with the Mako Shark fitting the uh, 4J. So if anybody needs a uh, 4J windshield, Mako Shark, you know what? Absolutely wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and get back to uh, the uh, Firebird there. Just a sec. All right, I, I know we're getting ready to start the project on the uh, uh, Blue Firebird there, but I have got a ton of stuff that have uh, come to light here in the last little bit. Why do I have the uh, Lincoln off the chassis? We'll get to that, we'll definitely get to that. And uh, I know earlier I said, hey, the boom came in, some other things came in like the uh, windshields there. I, I placed this punch. And remember last video I said, which one did we get done restoring? Which one, guys? If you said the one on the left, you're correct. It's the one on the left. I know they look same or similar, but in the last video, there was a telltale sign. I was panning around like this really slowly, and you could see the shine on the top of the uh, uh, roof, and it was just like, well, yeah, you just got done buffing that out with your shirt, you know? So it, there was a slight difference in that, but it's the one on the left that we got to restoring. It's probably uh, gonna go back on eBay unless somebody wants it. Uh, you gotta let me know. And I don't know if I'm gonna let go of the chassis. It's not that I'm getting thin on chassis. The body, it just, it's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Once again, we got a ton of stuff to get to. The ice cream truck. A buddy of mine up in uh, Canada, he needs a front bumper for the ice cream truck. I've got a, a couple of kits here from, uh, I ordered from um, Alumalite and I got a mold maker. And th th there's a couple reasons why I got this mold maker kit, this one specifically. One, it uh, has a drying time that's very short. I've had some uh, rubber mold maker things that take 24 hours before you can demold them. This one is relatively quick. Plus, 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 it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Again, I've had other um, rubber kits in, it's like a 10-to-one ratio. Can I do the math? Yes. Can I do it by weight? Yes. Does it suck ass? Yes. So one to one ratio, that's a lot better. I've also got some Illumilite for the uh, plastic. So when we, uh, and I think that's a one to one ratio as well, if I'm not mistaken. So that's easy and it turns white when we're done. So that's easy, easy, easy to paint any color there. So we have got a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff to get to. I'm excited about it. Um, the um, Lincoln here. 
on eBay and I'm gonna show you, and it's right now, it's up there right now, it's probably got like a day or so left, I'm not sure how much time's left, but it says, hey, Gray Lincoln, Aurora. I contacted the guy because I've never seen a gray one ever. And you know, I'm you know highly suspect. I said, listen, is there anything on the inside of the body? Because he didn't show any pictures. He showed the underneath side with the chassis attached to the body, but he didn't show the inside of the body. The guy was very nice. He shot me back. He goes, hey, listen, here's the inside of the body. Uh, it looks like it's a legit uh, Lincoln. Guys, I, let, let's go inside for a bit. Let's go inside for a bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll show you why I suspect it is not in Aurora. It may have been made from an Aurora Lincoln, but it looks like a um, it looks like someone popped it out of a Thromo, and I'll give you the reasons why I suspect that. Okay, here we go. Here's what we're looking at. Aurora T Jet Lincoln Gray slot car. Sounds like you got you know, sounds like you know who he's talking about. 30 bids, $152.50. Guys, you should do your research before you bid on stuff like this. Uh, looking at it, I'm going gray. I've never seen gray. Um, thank goodness we can scroll in and get you know a little bit better a view on it here. Things, uh, it just seems a little odd. And I'm looking at it, yeah, it's kind of filthy, kind of dirty, so it's been around for a while. Let's look at the uh, front of it. Okay, the front of it, the... Um, the grill isn't painted, the lights aren't painted, the scrolling a little bit. And it just looks like a a little, it doesn't look as smooth as the Aurora does. It looks like it's, uh, the mold has been used before. It really does that they got this out of. Let's look at the other side here. Okay. Um, yeah, things like right there on the bottom of the door there, that little bump, that doesn't make sense to me whatsoever. It really doesn't. Now, here, here's here's one thing, the bottom of it. When I saw this, the original picture, I said, hey, listen, you know, I see it's a T-Jet chassis. Got it. But then I started saying, started thinking, you know, could it have been a road race replica? Uh, you know, uh, Grumpy, who, you know, did somebody make this? You know, somebody make this? So I, I said, hey, listen, I asked him, I said, can you show me a picture of the inside of the body without the um, chassis there? Because I'm wondering if there's any writing. And he was nice enough, he added a picture. He sure did, he added a picture. And it there is no writing here, there's none, okay? But then I started looking at it, and let's just examine the back wheel wells. You see how carved out they are? Well, Aurora's doesn't look like that. And you see the part of the back of the wheel well, the bottom part, that's flashing right there, yeah, right there. No one got off, That, that that's what that is, that's what that is. Then you look around the other wheel well, again, carved out, and Aurora didn't do that. Aurora never glued the bumpers in like that. And then you see this little dot right there? That's not dirt. That is not dirt. That is a bubble. Best I can tell, uh, you know, uh, really, um, you know, scrolling in like this, that is a bubble. Just for fun, let's do this. I'm gonna go to this side. Now this is the side that we were looking at here. That's a bubble over here. Those three are bubbles. I can tell the difference between the bubbles and dirt. I mean, when we're looking, again, I'm going back to this one. We're looking at this one, I can see the dirt. I see that, I see that. But I again, looking at this, those are, there, there's an air bubble on that side. You know, that it's just, you, you can tell what they are. You can tell what they are. If, and that tells me that this was not an injection mold. This is a, you know, somebody uh, poured it like we're going to do today. It's not an injection mold. Injection mold, you're not going to have that. I've got a, a green bug and you guys have seen it. It uh, doesn't have any accents on it. And there's a little piece missing out of um, the, the, the front hood there. And it was because there wasn't enough of the plastic being injected into it people say well you know it just chipped off no it didn't when you look at the plastic there's no chip about it there's no stress on the plastic whatsoever so uh, that's what it would look like uh, if if they didn't have enough uh, plastic making the mold here now he also he, he reconsidered what I was saying because I, I told him I said I don't ever recall Aurora making a gray one and in this picture this really shows what we're talking about he says because uh, again he re-looked at it 
He says, oh, the front screw post is shortened. So he thought it was a cigar box or a speed line, something like that. I don't remember cigar box Lincoln. I don't remember a speed, uh, speed line. I, I don't. I don't think they did that. I really don't think they did it. Let's go back to this picture. Okay, now I'm going to focus in on the back screw post. Looks good. Looks good. Let's go to the front screw post. Now, you see those little shave marks there on the front of it? That's been sanded down, guys. That's been sanded down. When you compare that against the back one, that's nice. That's that's really pristine. You look over here and you see all that little frayed. That's definitely been sanded down. So that accounts for why it's been lower, why he thinks it was probably a cigar box or speed line, something like that. I, I, I don't think it was. I don't think it was. And I think $152.50 if, if I bid on this, if I bid on this, I would retract my bid. I would. The, the, no one's going to convince me that this was uh, Aurora produced this. I think it, somebody made a mold of the Lincoln that Aurora, you know, uh, made, and they popped this out. I'll be congruent with that, but I don't think this was struck from an Aurora mold. I really don't. Um, I, I, I took some pictures uh, of the uh, red one that I have that I was examining. And I, I, I'll put them up just to show, or, or quite frankly, they might already be up now that I'm thinking about it. They're probably already up in the video there. So that's why I don't think that this one is a uh, Aurora. Again, I think it was made from a Aurora. You know, somebody popped a um, mold from it, but I don't think Aurora, it came out of an Aurora mold. I don't. just got the Lincoln back on the chassis so guys be be careful if you're doing the eBay stuff and then hey it sounds too good to be true an Aurora gray uh, Lincoln yeah it is too good to be true I've got a two two red one two red Lincolns one of them's gonna go back up on eBay I know this doesn't have the factory accents on it but I, I think it probably originally did when I really scrutinized it I think it may have whoever had it before me uh, probably used like a rubbing compound and they came off or whatever, but I think that bugger's going back on eBay. <clears throat> Time to get into the Blue Firebird. I've been uh, waiting for this one. This came in earlier this week, like around Monday or something, and I think yeah, it doesn't have any it, it doesn't have any um, uh, brushes there, and it looks like uh, he got the sponge tires or had sponge tires on the back. He has a sponge tire on the back there. And the back bumper, less than the desirable. Front bumper, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, lacking a little bit of the chrome on the top there, but overall not too bad. All right, very good. Let me go ahead and get the body off the chassis. See what we got. All right, first time seeing the body off the chassis. What do you think, guys? Pretty good, huh? Now, doesn't it look like there's some glue in the back there for the back bumper, you know what? That, um, they're notorious for falling off, so I can understand why he glued it back on, but the front bumper just looks like it has the normal, you know, when they hot knifed it in there, it looks like it had a little flash on there. <coughs> Pardon me. I don't see any reason why we can't uh, clean this up in the sink real good. And maybe, I don't know, but maybe the warm water will loosen up the uh, glue there, depending on what kind of glue it is. Maybe we'll get lucky and that bumper will come off real easy for us. All right, let me go ahead and take it to the sink. All right, I'm at the sink. I'm getting ready to wash this bugger up. My caution is anytime you're at the sink, always have a screen catcher. Now this, it really applies on this body specifically. Can you imagine, uh, you know, getting this thing all cleaned up and then having the bumper go down the drain? Nonsense, just have a screen catcher there, guys. It only takes a second to put one in. All right, I'm getting it washed up and I just start running my thumbnail over the back bumper where that glue is and it's starting to come off. So I know that the water's helping get, uh, getting that old glue off. Let me go ahead and uh, rinse it some more. Well, I tell you what, it didn't take much for that um, glue to get, uh, or that bumper to get off from that glue there. I got some glue still on the body there where the back bumper was. I'm going to go ahead and get that off of the X-Acto knife. Good, I got the little holes there for the back bumper cleaned out. Looks good. Uh, I still have yet to wick out either of the screw posts. I'm going to do that. And uh, not bad shine. It looks better washed, but uh, I think eh, it's kind of dull on the roof there and whatnot. I think we can do a lot better at the VRP. So let me go ahead and get the uh, screw post wicked out and I'll get this thing shined up. Still gotta get the uh, front bumper off too. All right, you guys know I used a VRP vinyl rubber plastic. The caution, and I gotta give it to you, the caution is I've had a few of my uh, viewers say, hey listen, 
uh, the RP can take some of the uh, paint or accents off the uh, old stock car bodies. Uh, the old Thunder Jets have very little accents on to begin with. Maybe, I, again, I've been getting lucky, but when I've heard it from more than one viewers that the uh, VRP might affect the paint, use caution, guys. Use caution, use caution. Uh, a, a, a good substitute. Your mind said uh, Turtle Wax, spray Turtle Wax, because it works wonderful and doesn't seem to affect the paint. So that is the caution with it. I literally, I, I've already shaken it up. I literally just splooge a little bit on. There you go. A little bit on the uh, uh, hood and a little bit on the trunk. And that's it. I've got a paper towel ready to go here. I just rub it in and just let it set for a bit. I got the VRP all gooped up all over it. I'm gonna let it set aside, let that just kind of like soak into the plastic for a bit. Now talking about while that's uh, uh, setting there, let's go ahead and get into the chassis. Uh, looks like most of the parts in there, I know we're gonna need a tire, probably a couple brushes. I don't know uh, if we're gonna need anything else, but let's go ahead and get into it. Just starting to get into the chassis, I just realized about the bumpers. The, the chrome is too far gone just to put some Molotow on there. What I'm going to do with both of them, I mean, that, that's really stripped down. You know what? Look at that. That's really stripped down. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish them off, probably not today, and um, by taking some easy off, I can get all the chrome off, and then we can go ahead and re chrome them. But you, you got to get all the chrome off first. All right, let, let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. The engine clamp wasn't on very good. And, um, no, there, there, there's uh, at least one. I see one brush in there. And let's look at the bottom plate here. Looks like it could be clean, not bad. Okay, good. And I'm going to get the magnets out. I think we do have the brushes. They just weren't placed incorrectly. Wow. Wow, very good. Let me set those aside there. You see them in there, guys? Very nice. That's a nice find. Didn't think we had them originally. You know what? So we got the brushes. And how do the brush shoes or springs look? They look like they need to be cleaned. Yeah, I get it. And the shoes in the bottom. Of it. I, I, I'm, I'm on the edge here. Maybe everything should go in the brass so and get it real clean. Or let me see what I can do with the uh, Dremel, the wire brush. So let me do the wire brush first. If it isn't to my satisfaction, then we'll go ahead and do the uh, Brasso and get it all cleaned up that way. Uh, let me go and grab the wire brush. I just now further took apart the chassis. I got my Dremel over here uh, ready to go. Let's just see what it does as far as the um, uh, copper here. Again, this is a wire brush. I've used it on the bottom of these for years. So I also use it on the bottom of the com plate. Guys usually freak out when you see me do it. Now let me tell you something. I have decades and decades of success uh, doing this method on the bottom of the com plate with you know 100% success. And I keep telling people, if you uh, show me a better, quicker way to do it, I'm all ears. You know, I'm all ears. So far, nobody showed me a better, quicker way to do it. Let's see. Uh, again, that's not too bad. That's really not too bad. Done. <laughs> Done. I'm going to do the same thing to the shoes. going to do the same thing to the uh, gear plate there and get all the gears things. Probably take care of the axles, too. There was a lot of fur on the back axle there. There really was. There was a ton of uh, either dog hair or whatever just wrapped around it. I think so. Yeah, there's probably still some of the crown gear. Yeah, I got most of it out. I'm going to clean the crown gear as well there. Because, you know, when the like, um, hair, carpet, you know, things like that get wound around there, it doesn't make the back axle spin any better. Kind of too funny. I just got done with the wire brush, cleaning everything up, and I was getting ready to uh, change out the hubs and uh, tires and all that stuff. He glued it on. Whoever had it before me glued it on there. So uh, that sponge one's going to have to stay on. Very good. Just got the uh, hubs replaced, got the tires replaced, and I'm getting ready to do some reassembly. Look, look how shiny that is. The uh, wire brush on the Dremel, I, I can't say enough good about it. It makes for very quick work. It makes for very good work. Uh, one thing I, I, I always do, the brushes look like they're in good shape, but when you clean them, the flat ones, it only takes a second when you rub them on the paper like that, make sure you get both sides, but you can get any of the loose carbon off or any oil like that. Yeah, you see that on the paper there? That's the easiest way to clean them, guys. Absolutely easiest way to clean them. All right, let me do this. I'm going to go ahead and start putting it back together. 
and oil as you go along, it's the easiest way to do it. Got the shoes on, yeah, I got the axles in, the hubs on, all that stuff. Um, again, guys, you have sent me some really neat pictures. Stay, st st uh, pictures of your soccer stuff. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna showcase some of my viewers what they've sent me. You guys are remarkable. The work that you do, um, as far as freehand painting some of these uh, bodies that don't have, you know, they come to you white and things like that. By the time you guys get it done, it's amazing. So I, I keep sending the pictures. I love it. I love it. I always love to see what other guys are doing, not only with their slot cars, but your layouts, your layouts. If you've got some really cool things on your layouts, please send them to me. My uh, email should be uh, down there, either in the link below or on the uh, video right now. Just fiddling with the engine. There you go. Okay, good. The first thing I always like to do after I get the um, uh, engine clamp on and it's done is test it. It is tested. Because I know it didn't work with the uh, uh, brushes. They weren't in the right place, but let's see if we get any of that. Yeah, I heard it. Come on, there you go. There you go. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? That sounds good. Man, 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 man. So that is the chassis restored. Let me go ahead and get the uh, body there. I still got the VRP on it, just a sec. I just kind of wiped the uh, VRP up with a towel. I'm shirt buffing it here. Give me just a sec. I'll get this thing shined up. Too funny. She's getting ready to get the uh, uh, body on the chassis there. No front bumper, no back bumper. Let me go and scrounge some up. Both the front and back bumpers, great fit. They are glued in now. It is time, well, they look good too, don't they? It is time to get this bugger back on the chassis, get it on the track. All right, boy, it's on and it is track time, guys. I love this part of it. When you get a project done, it helps if it's in the slot. There you go. Oh boy. Yeah, see, that, that, that has got a lot of power to it. Yeah, I'm going to have to put this on the big track. I'm going to put on big track. That That's too fast for the small track. Open it up here. Oh, yeah, that feels good. That feels good. Looks good, too, doesn't it? Man, I like that a whole lot better. And that has got some real good juice. Oh, this is going to be hard for me to take off the track for a while. I like that. And the blue, who doesn't like that medium, or is it medium or dark blue? Who doesn't like that color, huh? You know what? That looks a hundred times better than what I got. I still have to restore that damn box. What I did do is I had an alcohol wipe and I just kind of wiped it, the outside of the box out a little bit. I got crud off, but it is nowhere near being uh, to where I'd want to give it to anybody or something like that. Okay, we have more to do, but boy, this has come out very, very good. I like that. That looks absolutely wonderful now, doesn't it? Tell you what, guys, I was just inside a bit ago. Uh, I do have to cut this video short. My wife reminded me of our prior obligations. I have to um, uh, finish the video tomorrow. There's a lot I've got to get to. I am so pleased that we got the Firebird done. And remember me uh, saying something about the box? In between takes, I was just having fun, just having fun. And I said, let me grab the box. Let me grab the box got the um, card out I got everything um, separated there and here's how good and clean I got it a lot of soap and water did that in that look nice a lot of soap and water I had um, all that tape that was on it you know all that gooey ass tape that was on it uh, that came off a little bit of soap and water but I used goo gone I used goo gone and that got it really 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 a whole lot better but then Look at the shine, <laughs> look at the shine. As you guys can imagine, I VRP'd that and I VRP'd this and just look at it, absolutely wonderful. I don't want it. I don't want the um, uh, the foam insert. I don't want, I, I think this is really cool though. The oiling instructions, I always love the way, and the assembly instructions with the oiling, I always love the way Aurora did that. But if anybody wants those four pieces right there, um, let me know, let me know. Again, I have got to cut this video short. I'm gonna to start tomorrow. We've got to get the front bumper there uh, duplicated. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So guys, um, again, if I didn't have to cut it short, I'd love to be out here for the rest of the day. Let me know if you need anything, I'm here for you. Boy, there's a lot, there's just a bunch to do. There's a bunch to get to. All right guys, I had fun, but again, I had to cut it short. See ya.